Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about solve inequalities in one variable algebraically. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help to use Minute Math. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go through a lot of examples and practice this. So our first example here is example 5, and they want us to solve this inequality. 3, 13 minus 7x is greater than or equal to 10x minus 4. Okay? All right. So what I like to do is bring my like terms together. So to do that, there's a few ways. I, uh, so it depends on the problem, kind of changes up. But in this case, I'm going to bring my x's to the left. I subtract a 10x to both sides here. And I actually can also subtract a 13 to both sides. Okay? So I'm going to bring my numbers to the right, my variables to the left. 13's cancel here, the 10x is cancel here. Minus 7x minus 10x is a negative 17x. It's still uh, greater than or equal to, and then minus 4 minus 13 is a minus 17. Okay? Now we want to get x completely by itself. To do that, we need to divide by a negative 17 to both sides, or multiply by uh, negative 1 over 17, but dividing is a little easier, I think. Now be careful, when we divide over an inequality by a negative number, the sign flips. Okay? Negative 17 is cancel, giving us a positive x left over. Here's our sign change flipping around, so now it's a less than or equal to sign. And negative 17 divided by negative 17 is a positive 1. Okay? Not too bad. Let's go deal with another one here. Okay, so this one here is going to have some fractions in it, number six. Okay, we want to solve this one as negative, or solve for x with negative three fourths x is greater than or equal to negative five eighths plus two thirds x. Well, fractions are our friends, and in my case, my only friend. Bad teacher pun here. Okay, my students never laughed when I did that one. <laughs> anyway, I hope you got a kick out of it. So, what we're going to do is bring your x's together. We're going to subtract a two-thirds x to both sides. Okay? And so we have minus three-fourths x minus two-thirds x. If we got a like denominator, right, negative three-fourths can be a negative nine-twelfths x, and then uh, negative two-thirds can be a negative eight-twelfths x. Okay, these cancel here, and we're left with a negative 5 eighths. So again, looking at this, seeing what it is, three, negative 3 fourths, we want to find a common denominator. We multiply this one by 3 over 3, negative 3 fourths, and we got negative 9 twelfths. This one here, negative 2 thirds by 4 over 4, got us 8 twelfths. Okay, now we have a like denominator, we can add them. We can add the numerators, and negative 9 minus 8, or add to the negative, is a negative 17 over 12x which is greater than or equal to negative 5 eighths. Okay? Well, what we can do now is multiply both sides by a uh, negative 12 over 17 here. Negative 12 over 17. And what that does, it eliminates the negative 17 over 12 on the left-hand side, giving x by itself. Notice, again, we multiply by a negative number over the inequality. Inequality flip sign, so it's now it's less than or equal to and negative 5 eighths times a negative 12 over 17. Two negatives make a positive. Multiply that out and simplify that. Okay? We can write this here as a 15 over 34 when it's simplified. And I did forget to do is to write this in interval notation. That's what they want us to write it as as well. So it's negative infinity, comma, 15 over 34. And there's a bracket there because it equal that number, but it's 15 over 34 and then down through to negative, 50, negative infinity. In the previous one, I should have wrote that as well. This is written as negative infinity and 1 here. Okay. They also want us to write an interval of rotation. Okay, so x can be any number leading up to 1 and including 1. So now we're going to do something called a compound inequality. All right, compound inequality, meaning there's going to be two inequalities there. Okay, so number seven, 
we're going to simplify or solve using a compound inequality here. Okay, so we have 3 is less than or equal to 2x plus 2, which is less than 6. Okay, all right. There's a few ways to kind of go about it, and um, some people like to break it up, and I'll break it up here. So what they do is say, okay, we have 3 is less than or equal to 2x plus 2, and 2x plus 2 is less than 6. Kind of solve each one individually and then bring it back together at the end. Subtract the 2 to both sides. 3 minus 2 is 1, less than or equal to 2x. Divide by 2 to both sides. And we have less than or equal to x here, and we have 1 half. Same thing here, subtract 2 to both sides. 2x is by itself is less than 6 minus 2, which is 4. Divide by 2 to both sides, and x is by itself now is less than 4 divided by 2, which is 2. And we can bring it all together to have one inequality to be 1 half less than or equal to x, which is less than 2 right here. If you want to see this in interval notation, interval notation, we could see this as a 1 half through to 2, but we cannot equal 2, so we put a parenthesis there. Okay? So these two are meaning the same thing. All right? All right. Now, so what some people do with this problem here, what you could do if I write it over here is some people will write it like this. And that's usually how I do it. And I subtract the 2 to all parts like that. And just make sure you, and then I keep kind of going from there. Um, if you want to do that, that's fine. Just make sure you keep everything in line. Don't forget things. Students usually do forget it, but keep that in mind. Number eight here. So this is uh, a tricky one, okay? We're going to solve a compound inequality with the variable in all three parts. We have 3 plus x here, which is greater than 7x minus 2, which is uh, sorry, greater than, excuse me, uh, 5x minus 10. So 3x, 3 plus x is greater than 7x minus 2, which is greater than 5x minus 10. Okay. So let's go solve each inequality individually like we did the first, uh, this method up here. So we have 3 plus x is greater than 7x minus 2. And we have 7x minus 2 is greater than 5x minus 10. I'm going to bring my numbers, uh, well in this case I'm going to bring the variable to the middle, okay, that's the goal here, bring, uh, if we can, variable to the middle, and the numbers to the outsides. So I'm going to subtract an x here to both sides, add a 2 to both sides, 3 plus 2 is 5, and it's greater than, and then we, uh, 7x minus x is 6x, and we divide by 6 here, and we have x by itself, and we have 5, 6, right? All right, so 5, 6 is greater than x. On the right-hand side, let's do the same thing. Let's bring the x's to the middle if we can. Subtract a 5x. Subtract a 5x. Add a 2. Add a 2. Okay? And we're left with now 2x left over inside is greater than. And uh, minus 10 plus 2 is a minus uh, 8. Divide both sides by 2. And x is greater than a negative 4. Okay? So look at this. This is a little tricky here, okay? Notice we have x is greater than negative 4 here, but x, or 5, 6 is le uh, greater than x, which, and the same is x is less than 5, 6. So we can't just combine it right away. That'd be kind of weird. Wouldn't really make any sense. So we have to adapt this, and what we're going to do is kind of bring this part over to the other side here, and bring this part over here. So x is greater than negative 4, it's the same thing as negative 4 is less than x, and then, which is less than 5, 6. And that's how we kind of have everything together there. If you want to see it on a number line, you can put that right here, it should fit, if I do it quickly, or short. We have two values here, we have negative 4 and 5, 6, and it doesn't equal any of them, so we have an open circle at those values, we can connect in between. And that's where our values that x can be between negative 4 is less than x, which is less than 5, 6. If you want that interval notation, negative 4, comma, 5, 6, and we have parentheses there. Okay? So now hopefully you have some practice with some inequalities with one variable and solving that algebraically. If you learned something, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video. This helps us make more free math lessons for you. 
And as always, thanks for watching. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. MinuteMathTutor.com